summarize or we have all these formulas in, in the textbook so I ju just remove them and keep this which are the one we will use first Uh, so here we have a problem about uh, sales of tennis shoes in uh, four quarters of two years. Uh, first quarter, it has a demand of uh, 16. Let's call it 1-1. One, one. 16. Uh, second quarter of the first year is uh, 32. And then the third quarter is 71, and the fourth quarter, 62. And that's the first year. Second year, we have uh, similar. We have uh, we have the demand, which is 14, 45, 84, and 47. Like this. And here it's very obvious that this is a seasonal product. We have very high demand in the third quarter, very low demand in the first quarter, and some kind of uh, well average in uh, quarters two and four. Uh, also, when adding all the demand for each year together, we can see that here we have also some kind of increasing trend. You can expect that the demand in one quarter will be higher than the demand in the same quarter for the previous year. So here let's now try to use Winter's method, try to initialize this method and uh, find the values first of the gradient, the slope of the line, then of the series, which is the end point of the line, which should be used when we are extending the line to make forecast, and also to find the initial values of the seasonal factors. So let's now start here. Initialization, find the value of V1 in this problem, and N, as we remember, it's the number of periods in a full season, a full year, which is one-fourth multiplied by the sum of the demand of period 2n minus 1 up to minus n. And uh, we, if we assume that we are now in period number 0, that means this is, this is the demand for period 0 minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, and minus 7. So this will now be the sum of the demand for the first year, which is 16 plus 32 plus 71 plus 62 divided by 4 will make a value of 45.25. Which will be the same as the, the average, the midpoint of the line for that period in, in the time, uh, time series here. So this is, is the midpoint of the line, the average sales in year number one. Similar, find V2 as the average sales of year number two. Still four periods, and now we have 14, 45, 84, and 47 divided by 4 makes a value of 47.5, which is the midpoint for the trend line for the second year. Now we have this value and this value. To find the gradient of the line, just find out how much does it increase from this point to this point and then divide by the number of periods. V2 minus V1 
divided by n. And n is 4 because we want to have the gradient for one period. How much will we expect this line to increase from one period to the next one? And the answer will now be 0 0.56. 47.5 minus 45.25 divided by 4. So now we have the gradient the increase of the line from one period to the next one, and then it's pretty easy. Start to find the, 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 the series value, the end point of the line, this value. Start at point V2, and continue the line until time zero. V2 is 47.5. G0 is 0 0.56 and N plus 1, 4 plus 1 is 5 divided by 2. This will give us a value of 48.34. This value. End point of the line which should be used for forecasting by continuing this uh, trend line into the future and then adjust by, uh, by the seasonal factors. So now we have these values, but we also need to initialize the seasonal factors. And uh, to initialize the seasonal factors, we should use this value for all the eight seasons in this uh, in this uh, well data set, uh, we remember the formulas that the C T, the seasonal factor for one particular time period, and first we need to find the seasonal factor for all periods. Then we should find the average between period one in the two different years and period two in the two different years and so on. And then at last we should normalize, adjust to make sure we have a value which is exactly the same as the number of, of periods. So now let's try first find the seasonal factor for period minus seven, which is this period. If this is period zero, minus one, two, three, four, five, six, minus seven. The seasonal factor for minus 7 will be the demand for that period, 16, divided by the V value, this value, for the year we are talking about, which is now year number 1. So the V value here is 45.25. No, no, not plus, but minus. Minus n plus 1 divided by 2, which is 5 divided by 2. And minus the, the, the value uh, j. And J will be the number of the period, which is 1 here, 2 there, 3 there, 4 there, and then back to 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in this case, minus 1. And multiplied by the gradient, which is 0 0.56, this one. This will give us a seasonal factor of 36% for the first period in season one, like this. And then we should continue. Find the seasonal factor for period number two. Let's go through this one, minus six. It will now be 
32 divided by 45.25. This is the same. This is the same year. So then we're using the same V value, 45.25. minus n plus 1, 5 divided by 2. Now we are in period number 2. j will be equal to 2 and multiplied by 0 0.56, <coughs> which will give us a value here of 71%. 0 0.56. 71. This one and this one are the seasonal factors so far. And we can continue. Period number three. We now have a demand of 71. So if we look to this formula, it will be quite similar. We have 71 instead of 32. We st are still in year number one, 45.25 this value. n plus 1 is still 5 divided by 2. Now minus 3 because we are in the third period. So this should be replaced by 3. And the gradient is the same, 0 0.56. So now by just replacing this and this value by 71 and 3, we will get the seasonal factor for uh, period minus 5, which is 1.56. And as we can see here, 71 is 1.56 above uh, or multiplied by the expected value if we only, sorry, only look at the trend line. So here we find that uh, the first period are 36% of expected value according to the trend line. Second season, sec no, second period, 71%. Third period, 156%. And the fourth period, 62 as the demand. The V value is the same. But now 62 is in period number four. So we should just replace this with 4, and the rest of the formula will be the same. And we'll get a value of 1.35. So let's continue to year number 2. And then we have 14 as the demand. This will now be C minus 3. Then we have the demand of 14. We now have the V value of V2 because now we are in the second year and then that value of 47.5. We have minus five half minus one because we are back in the first period as we are in the first period here. But the gradient are the same, 0.50. So now here we will get the C minus 3 should be equal to 30% <coughs> compared to 36% in the first period the previous year. And we will continue here just replacing the demand and the number of the period. But as you also We'll see here that this value, the V value, should be changed from one year to the next year. So we need to make sure that we're using the V value for the year we are actually calculating the seasonal factor for. And similarly, second period in the second year will be 95%. Replacing the demand with 45 and the uh, month or, or the period number with 2. Similar for the third period, we'll get 
and for the fourth period we will get 0 0.97. <coughs> so let's now try to find the seasonal factors for the same season that we should now use in the forecasting. We have the seasonal factor for first period in the first year and the first period in the second year, but we need to find the average to, uh, to find out what, is, uh, wh what seasonal factor should we now use. So let's see that C1 will be 0 0.36 plus 0 0.30 divided by 2, 0 0.33. C2 will now be 0 0.71 and 0 0.95. Take the average will be 0 0.83. C3, average of 156 and 176. Divided by 2 will give us 1.66. And C4, the average of 135 and 0 0.97. Divided by 2 should give us a value of uh, 1.16. And then we need to normalize, because if we add all these values together, we will not get exactly 4, but we will get the value of 3.98. Adding all these values together, we get 3.98, which means that we should find what we call the norming factor. Let's call that nf, which is the value n divided by the sum of the seasonal factors. Or we can just take here the values 4 divided by 3.98, which will give us a norming factor of 0 point no, of 1.005. And to get the exact values to use here, we should multiply these values by the norming factor here, which will not be very much difference, but uh, you will actually. Yeah, by using uh, two decimals here, we will still have 33, 83%, but here we will adjust to 1.67 and 1.17. Sometimes you will get a, a, a bigger deviation here, and then the norming factor should... Okay, get a phone call. Should not have this link installed here, but anyway, okay. Um, I should have, uh, uh, so sometimes you will get a bigger norming factor and you will have some uh, more adjustments here because, uh, well, not always you will get uh, uh, a very uh, a value which is exactly or very close to the n value, but the deviation should be not be too high. So here, using the norming factor, you should be able to adjust the seasonal factors. So the sum should be exactly the same as the number of periods. So now we have we have the initial values. We have the gradient. How much should we increase from one year uh, from one period to the next? We have the S value, the series, which is the end point of the line, and we have the seasonal factors shown here. So let's now try to make a forecast for the first period in the next year. Let's call that F1 should now be to make a forecast 
we should try to continue the trend line here into the future and then adjust by the seasonal factor. So now the forecast for period one made in period zero, so we are only forecasting for one period ahead, will now be the S value, 48.34. plus the gradient multiplied only by one, since we are only forecasting for one period ahead, 0 0.56. But we cannot just continue this trend line into the future. We also need to adjust by the C value, the seasonal factor for period number one. The same period, this is very important, use the seasonal factor for the same period that you are forecasting for. And uh, the c-value was uh, 0 0.33. And this, if we round to the closest integer, will give us a forecast of 16. So here we can assume that we will have a forecast of 16 in the first period in the coming year. If we are making a forecast for period two, we uh, will just use the same values here, F2, 48.34, plus 2 multiplied by the gradient. Because now we are forecasting two periods into the future from here and two periods ahead, then we should assume that the, the gradient will increase by, uh, the line trend line will increase by um, 0 0.56 for each of the two periods ahead. And then adjust by the second seasonal factor of 0 0.83. And I don't, I haven't done actually the calculations here, but you can easily do that. Forecast for period number two, the value of the series plus the value of the gradient multiplied by two and adjusted by the seasonal factor. And so we can continue to forecast into the future by just extending the trend line and multiplying by the seasonal factor for that particular season. So this was the initialization procedure. We have now started a winter's method forecast for the coming periods. We can't just make forecasts from the current time into the future. But we also remember the formulas we had here, which is also in, in the textbook, which is formulas that sh shall be used to update this method. As we remember for the single and double exponential smoothing method, we had the alpha and the beta smoothing constant. And now we have also added the uh, gamma smoothing constant for the seasonal factors. So we should now, when we get a new data point, we should be able to update this forecasting method. So let's just erase all this and try to use these formulas to update the values and the methods, uh, the, the values for the, the series, the gradient, and also the seasonal factor for that particular uh, period. <coughs> and here in this problem, we get information that in the first period in the next year, we will have a demand of 18. And now we should update these values. We are also given information about the smoothing constant. Alpha should be 0 0.2. Beta should be 0 0.15. and gamma should be 0 0.1. This is given. And 
when you get into a real job and should do some forecasting, this decisions will be yours. And then you should try to analyze the, uh, the previous demand and see what is actually the value for the smoothing constant that fits best for our particular problem, our product or the market we are in. Because this is different. There is no exact value, which is the correct value here. You need to, uh, to try to estimate a value, which is uh, the, the value which is best fitted to, to your particular problem. So now let's update the value of the series. We had uh, a value of uh, S0, uh, which was uh, 48.34. So now use the formula for updating the series value, which is the alpha value, 0.2. Multiplied by the demand um, which now the current demand, the actual the newest demand, which now is 18. But you need to divide or adjust by the seasonal factor for period number one, which we just calculated to be 0 0.33 and this will now represent the importance of the latest demand, the latest data point 18, but we should now multiply it by 1 minus alpha which now is 0 0.8 uh, and add with that number multiplied by the previous value, the S0, which was uh, 48.34, plus the previous value of the gradient, 0 0.56. This will now give us a new value of the series, which is 50.03. which was higher than the previous one. And that is, of course, because we are still uh, continuing the trend line with an increasing trend. And we are also adjusting for a new demand, which is 18, which is actually higher than the forecast we had, which we remember was 16. So now we have to adjust this, the end point, the, the series value, so it will be a bit higher than we actually had forecasted. Okay, let's now also update the gradient. G1 will now use the smoothing constant beta, which we have decided or given the value of 0 0.15. And the beta constant should be multiplied by the difference between the two previous series points, the S1 value of 50.03 and the S0 value of 48.34. And we should now add 1 to 1 minus beta, which now is 0 0.85 multiplied by the previous value of the gradient, the G0 value, 0 0.56. And this will give us the value of 0 0.73, which means that now we have found out that this trend line, which we had uh, calculated by using the two first full uh, full years, we had calculated it with, uh, with a slope of 0 0.56. It is now adjusted a bit, so it will increase a bit more. And the new gradient will be 0 0.73, because the demand in the first period was 18, which was higher than we actually would expect if we had continued this line with the same gradient as previous. 
So now we have updated the series values, the gradient, uh, the gradient value, and we also have to update the C value, the seasonal factor value, the C1. Because now we are in the first period, and we should update with the value of gamma, which is 0 0.1. And uh, this one should be multiplied by the actual demand, the newest demand, which is 18, divided by the series value, 15, uh, uh, 50, all three, which makes this as the percentage of the actual demand compared to the uh, to the uh, well the demand uh, or, or the value on the uh, on the trend uh, on the line the series line and we should then add 1 minus gamma which now will be 1 minus 0 0.1 0 0.9 multiplied by the previous value of this particular <coughs> seasonal factor, which we have found to be 0 0.33. This one would now be slightly adjusted to be 0 0.333, if we add one more, more decimal here. Um, ideally, we should actually normalize the seasonal factors each time we are updating one of them. But here, the difference will be uh, so uh, small that it will in practice now not have, a, uh, have any effect. But this is the way to update all these, uh, uh, all these uh, variables, the series value, the gradient value, and also the seasonal factor when we get a new data point. And then when we get data point for the second period in the third year, we should use the same formulas, but now just replace the values of the series, the gradient, and, and uh, uh, the seasonal factor with, with the previous uh, values. To make a forecast now, we should just use the new values. So now, if we are, yeah, well if we now are in period number one are for and forecasting for period two, one period ahead, this will be the series value of 50.03 plus the gradient value, which is now 0 0.73. If we are forecasting for only one period ahead, we just have to multiply this by, by one, but if we are forecasting for several periods ahead, we have to multiply by the number of periods here, which was the tau value as we remember from the from the formula I showed uh, a few minutes ago. And again, multiply by the seasonal factor. Now we are forecasting from period one into period two, and then of course we should use the seasonal factor for period number two, 0 0.83, which will give us a value of 42.13, or 42 if we choose the closest integer. So here, by using this uh, forecasting method, we can uh, assume we can, we can forecast the demand in period number two to be 42 items. And so we can continue. If we are forecasting for period three, then we have to add uh, the gradient multiplied by 2, since we are forecasting for two periods ahead, and then multiply by the seasonal factor for period number 3. Okay, I think that's it. I will also upload a solution on this problem on Frontier after this lecture. And uh, as you have seen, this Winters method for forecasting with seasonal series, which also includes a trend, is a part of your second assignment. And now we have seen uh, forecasting method for stationary series, for trend-based series, for seasonal series, both without a trend and also including a trend. Uh, 
the book and also these uh, slides includes uh, something which uh, is called uh, the let's see yeah here which is called the box Jenkins method which is even more complex method this is not actually a part of um, the curriculum in this course but you should know about them because these are rather complex methods which are also able to find um, some uh, uh, some uh, dependencies which is not uh, natural or uh, like trends which depends on the previous uh, development for the previous month or seasons which depends on the uh, on the, um, the same seasons for which is uh, regularly uh, continuing uh, for box Jenkins models this is rather complex statistical analysis where you are also able to identify dependencies which is not necessarily so uh, easy to understand there could be dependencies that it can be continuing every third period for some reason or uh, it could be other dependencies and this is based on what we call the auto correlation and uh, yeah we should not go much into details here you should know about these methods we recommend at least 72 data points this is uh, some kind of statistical analysis uh, which means if you are talking about uh, data points as uh, monthly demand this means that you should have at, at least six years of history before you can even start using this method uh, and they are based on some kind of uh, uh, advanced uh, statistical uh, analysis but uh, as mentioned this is not directly a uh, uh, part of the curriculum in this course but you should know about these methods and know about that there are more advanced forecasting methods which also can uh, find uh, the uh, dependencies which is different from both trends and season which is well, quite logical okay and that's the last part of forecasting uh, and then we should continue on chapter three which is about aggregate planning And uh, yeah, I think we take a break now. It's uh, well, five to twelve, so it's no s need for for starting this. Uh, I, uh, we take take a break until twelve fifteen, and then I continue on chapter three, which is uh, the topic about aggregate planning and different uh, planning methods when you have uh, uh, a given demand for for the coming periods. Okay, let's take a break and then continue uh, at 12.15.